Hello everyone, welcome back to our channel. Today we are going to talk about how to model this Infinity Airport inside of Grasshopper. First, I'm going to choose Polygon. And right here, you can change the radius. I will make it 55. And segments, I will make it 3. And the next thing I will do is I will explode this triangle, bring it in, and I will get three line-like curves. So one, two, three. And then I will find its end points by coming over here, choose it. This is the start points. And this is the endpoints of each of those three lines. Also, the next step is I will try to find the midpoint of each of those curves. So I will come over here to point on curve. By default, you will find the midpoint on each of those lines. And then I will try to make a two-point vector. Vector two-point. The base point are the midpoint. And the target are the centroid of this triangular shape. So I will come over to surface. I'll click this. Bring it in. And I'll find the centroid as the tip point of those vectors. And then the next thing I'll do is I will try to move those points towards to this vector. In order to do so, I will type in move. Those are the points that I want to move. And those are the vectors. And I can change the magnitude of the vectors by using multiplication. I'll type in 1.222, bring it in, and then bring it here. So I move this point from here to here, this point from here to here and this point from here to here. That's what this is doing. And my goal is to make this point, this point, and this point into one list, and then make a connection in between. Same, this point, this point, and this point into one list, and make a connection in between. And same right here. And in order to do so, I have to make sure that each of those points are in the same list. So I will choose merge. For example, the starting point, should be on the first part. And let's look at the data structure. And this list has three items. That is not okay for merge. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna graph it and also graph the endpoints and also the centroids. I need to graph them too because they are flat list right now. And then this will be the first, I'll bring it in. Those will be the second, I'll bring it here. And those will be the last, I'll bring it to here. Then I will get three sublists, and each of those sublists has three items inside, which is exactly what I want. So I will come back to curve, I will choose interplate, and then I'll bring those curves in. Then I will get this. The next thing I need to do is I will try to join them together. So I will type in join curves. Right here, you see that this list has three sublists. So what I will need to do is I will flatten the list. Just right click it, click flatten, and then bring it in. Now I get one curve. The next thing I need to do is I will type in fillet. I'll choose this one and I'll bring this curve in. And then I need to give it a radius. I'll do 3.555 and then bring in. Then I need to hide everything else except this and the, the triangle. The next thing I want to do is I want to divide this curve into three segments. One here, one here, and one here. In order to do so, I want to check the start points of this curve. I will just come over here to curve, point on curve. By default, it's the midpoint on this curve. And I will move it to zero. So we can see that this is a starting point of this curve. But in order to divide the curve from here, here, and here, we need to move this start point from here to here. Okay, we want this point to be our start point. How we can do that? Well, it's a little bit tricky. First of all, I want to look at this polygon. And I want to come over here to curve and I will choose control points. I'll bring it in. I will find the control points here. We have four control points for triangle. That's because the start point and the end point is overlapping. What we need to do is we're going to find the starting point right here. So I'll come to sets and I will choose list item, find the first point. The next thing I'm going to do is I will find this point on the curve. In order to do so, I need to come over to curve and I will choose curve closest point. This is a point that I'm using as a reference. I'll bring it in. And this one is a curve. I'll bring it in. And then you'll find this point on curve for me. And how we can move the seam from here to here? Well, there is a very convenient component just called seam. And then the curve that I want to operate is this curve. And right here, it requires the parameter of the new seam. And it is so convenient that this component, curve closest point, gives you the parameter of this point right here. So I'm just going to drag it in and now I'll get the new start point. So if I bring it in here, you will see that this curve start from here, which is exactly what we want. The next step is I will come over to divide curves and I will bring it in. By default, it's 10. Now I'm going to change it to three. 
and you will see that this curve has been divided into three parts. But in order to really split it them into three different segments, what I need to do is I will come over here to shatter, bring the curve in again, new curve and the parameter on the curve. Well, it already give us the parameter. It's right here. So I will get three locally defined values, which are three planar curves. If I bake it, you will see that I'll get one curve right here, one curve right here, and one curve right here. This is exactly what we want. And the next few steps is I will move this up and move this up and move this up. That's the overall shape of our infinity ear board. And how we can do that? Well, first of all, I will come over to the divide curves. And by default, I'm just going to start with 10 counts. And then the next thing I'm going to do is I will use graph mapper. We have talked about graph mapper many times. If you still don't understand it very well, please check the unzipped wall tutorial inside of this description. What I will choose for today is I will come over to graph types and I will choose Gaussian, right? This kind of movement fits our idea. And then I will make a range. I will generate a series of number from zero to one. And I want the number of items of this component. And I want the number of items of this component to be equal. And right here, it is equal. So this is great. So in order to have a better control, I will type in 10 right here, bring this in, bring this in, and bam, we got this. So the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna move those control points up into the ear by using numbers right here. Type in move, I'll bring those points in, a unit Z value. And right here, those values. And you can see that because the maximum number here is one on the Y direction. So this is simply too tiny. So we cannot see much magnitude change. So I'll just type in multiplication and multiply a number here. I'll type in 22, 1, 2, 2, and bring it in. And then I'll get those points. I'll come over to the interplate and bring those curves in and we will see something like this. But you will say that, well, this is not what we want because what we got earlier is those curves, right? This one is taller than this one and it's taller than this one. How we can do that? Well, it's very easy. We just multiply some numbers into it. Right here, we have one list and this list has 11 values. And right here, we have three sublists and each of those sublists has 11 values. So what I want to do is I want to make this input into three sublists and each of those sublists has 11 items too. Just have the similar structure. And each of those sublists multiply a different number. Well, how are we going to do that? Right here, I will just type in series. We only have three count here because we have three sublists here. So in order to do that, I will come over here and plug this value in. So we'll get 0, 1, 2 into it. And of course, I don't want the start point to be 0. So I will change it to 1. And then I'll bring this in. But right here, you'll see that the end result is still one list. And this list has 11 items. So in order to change that, I have to come over here and graph this. Well, let's take a look. Now we have three sublists and each of those sublists has 11 items. Also right here, we have the same data structure. So this is great. And then we will plug this 22.2 .2 into the steps in between. And we will see something like this. I can make it smaller. So the beauty of this is that you can control the overall shape of this form by changing the graph right here. And the smoothness of those curves are controlled by the math behind the Gaussian distribution. So you can change this up and down, left to right. Make sure that the endpoints are not above zero. So the transition in between here is great. I'm going to hide everything else for now. And let's take a look. We'll realize that this part is not smooth at all. That's because the divisions that you give it here is too low. We give it a 10. That's obviously not enough. Let's do 40 and let's take a look. I'll change it here and I'll change it here. Okay. So this looks very smooth to me. And also I will hide those points. Now we take a look. I will hide this triangle here and we can change the input number for the segments. Now it's three. If it's four, it looks something like this. Let's check what is wrong here. So the reason that it's wrong is because we have four sublists right here, but we only have three sublists right here. Why is that? That's because when we divide the curve, we should divide it into four segments, but right here, it's still three. To change that, I'll click it here. I'll delete this input. I'll bring this all the way to the start point and I'll plug this in. So now it's all good. I can change it to four, five, six. This looks great. 
And also I can change the radius, so on and so forth. So you can see that this whole shape is fully parametric. Now I'm going to change it to four because that is the shape for my airport design. And I will play with the magnitude right here by changing the steps in between. So right here, 14.27, I can change it down a little bit. And also I will change the magnitude of the vector in the very early right here. So those curves are not going to be too close to each other. And then I will try to give a shape for this curve. If we just use pipe, we, all, we are only going to get something like this. The section of those shapes are just circle. It's not a good choice for architecture. So we want to make the section into rectangle. And how we can do that? Well, it's actually very complicated. Let's first look at into this output here. It says we have four curves right here. And I want to join those four curves together by using join curves. And of course, I have to flatten the data structure here. So I'll get one closed curve right here. And then I need to project this curve into the XY plane. So I'll get this. The next thing I will do is I'll come to curve and I will use this perpendicular frames. I'll bring it in and I'll bring this curve in. And then I will choose a number here. Let's say we have four sides right now. So each size will get like 40 surface. I'll do a multiplication. I'll bring this in. And of course, I will drag this number right here, four, into the input. So I will generate 160 frames right here. And then I will move those frames into space. Why am I doing that? Because that's pretty much the only way. If you are using the frames right here, if I do rectangle here, and then if I make a loft by using those rectangles, this is what's happening. But we don't want this rectangle to be tilted, right? We want it to be vertical. So we have to use the way that I'm expanding right now. I'll delete those and delete this one. And then I will send those frames into this curve. In order to do so, first of all, I want to get the origin of those frames. So I'll come over here to vector. And then I will choose deconstruct plan. And here are the origin. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to type in move. I'll move those origin into space. I'll give a Z value. Let's do 222. So this is what we're going to get. And then I'll make some connections in between. So I will come over here to curve and make line. This is a start point. This is end point. We get something like this. And I will find the intersection between those lines and those curves. So I'll come over here to intersection right here. And then I'll choose curve to curve and the curve A, the curve that we just draw here. And the curve B are the lines in between. I'll bring it in and I'll graft it. And then I'll hide those lines and let's take a look. So what we are doing here is we find those points that has the same X, Y value with those points on the 2D plan. So what we're going to do is we're going to move those perpendicular frames into those coordinating points that has the same X and Y value. In order to do so, I will type in move. And of course, I need vector 2D. Here are the base point. And the target point is a point that I just generated here. Oh, right here, I realized that those points right here didn't intersect with this curve. Why is that? Well, let's take a look. This input, we have four curves, but actually we only want to have one curve. I got the wrong input. So I'll bring the join curve into the component. Now let's take a look of the output. We have 160 items, which is exactly what we want. But actually we have 160 sublists and each of those sublists has one item inside. And right here for the base point, it's a flattened list. So I want to flatten it here also to make it equal. So bring it in. We have uh, 160 items on the first list. We have 160 items on the second list. And this is exactly what I want. So I will use those as a vector and I will use those frames, bring it in and we will get this and I will hide everything else. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to type in rectangle. And those are the plans we want to use. And the XY inputs determines the width and the height of those rectangles. What I need to do is I will come over here to math and I will use construct domain. I'll bring in 2.22, bring in and also bring this in. And of course, this domain shouldn't be a equal number for both ends. So I will come over here to expression minus X. So I'm making a domain minus 2.22 to 2.22. And I will make a copy 
bring this in for the Y input, make this number smaller. And right here, I'll make this number smaller too. So they don't overlap with the adjacent shapes. And then I'm gonna loft them. So I'll just type in loft and bring it in. And the end part, you want to make it closed. I will right click it and loft option, closed loft and hit okay. Now I'll bake this. And you will see that this looks great. Of course, you can change the curve. You want to change the overall shape. And if you want to make a fillet in between, there are two different ways. First, you can just do it right here in Rhino. I will type in fillet edges. The next radius, one is too big. So I'll type in 0 0.1, enter, select all the edges, hit enter, hit enter. Now you will get this fillet edges in between and it's uh, one closed poly surface. If you explode it, you will find one, two, three, four surfaces. And also you will find four surfaces in between for the fillet edges. What you can also do is come over here, change the radius right here. It gives you a fillet also. So if I do 0 0.2 here and bring in, and if you do that, each of those rectangles will have those fillets. And uh, if I bake it, you cannot explode this surface because it's continuous from the beginning to the end. Again, this whole model is fully parametric. You can change all the input. For example, you can make it bigger in terms of the radius. And also you can change how many segments you want it to be. I can change it to three, four, five, six. Once we have more, it's hard to avoid this kind of overlap. So I'm gonna make it back to four and that's it. So thank you so much for your attention and I'm looking forward to see you in our next tutorial.